All right, people. This is a this is a weird one. This is a weird one. This is really weird. Stick your thanks to that like button, by the way, if you click on this video. You might have heard. I want to share thoughts. My first thought is somewhere out there. Paul Dano's Riddler's very upset. <laughs> this is not how it's supposed no to go. No more lies. <laughs> Spider-Man's supposed to be in Morbius. If this is the multiverse, do not lie. <laughs> Guys, if you haven't heard yet, um, there's some things that came out about Morbius and I, we don't really talk about leaks anymore on this channel, as some of you have noticed. And it's not really a leak, in my opinion. This is just talking about things that are not in the movie <laughs> itself, <laughs> apparently. Anti-leak. So this is not confirmed yet. However, all over social media, like all over my Twitter feed, all over my Instagram feed, this was just populating my sphere. And now I'm like, you know what? I do want to kind of talk about it a little bit. So if you haven't heard what's being reported right now, keep this in mind. I'm actually still looking forward to this movie. I'm looking forward to Morbius, regardless of this information. But I do have some particular feelings about the market of how this is all being handled. Everything that generated the biggest amount of hype for this movie, no matter what you were most looking forward to, no matter what you were most anticipating, it's objective. The thing people got most amped about were the Spider-Man tie-ins. As you saw in the trailer, first images that came out was Jared Leto walking, and then behind him was that photo of Spider-Man from the PS4 game, the Tobey Maguire said it's a murder on it. Also, you know, like the Daily Bugle newspaper, the Oscorp building, Horizon. I am. I know. Reportedly, none of these things are actually in the movie anymore. They've all been edited out of the film. And then on top of that too, and this one strikes me as the, as the oddest one of them all. Apparently Vulture's been removed from the movie as well. This is a slight spoiler. I personally don't know any of the details about what the scenes entail. Reportedly that there's they're supposed to just be a post credit scene featuring Vulture and that's it. Like there are scenes in the trailer where I'm like, that, that must be just be straight up removed like the first thing we ever saw of Vulture in the trailer, like that must not be in there because it would have looks like it wouldn't make sense for a post credit scene for, for that to be there. <laughs> so maybe the thing in the new trailer is what it is. I, I don't know. But then again, Sony's doing that thing where they're showing their post credit scenes in the trailer. That's just strange. <laughs> That's really, really strange. There's more to talk about on this. As it stands, when I first heard about this, my first reaction is people are going to get really upset about that. It's one thing to like manipulate footage in like a Marvel trailer or something like that, as we've seen time and time again now, where they CGI swap out like certain characters. One of the most famous moments is, of course, when Captain America and Hulk are running in that Avengers Infinity War moment, something that's just not featured in the movie at all. But you still get, like, Captain America and Hulk in the movie. Yeah, you still the get that. the context of that shot is still happening around that scene. Whereas in this, this is the thing that they obviously use to generate hype. This is the thing that they obviously use to reel people in, especially coming off of the heels of Spider-Man No Way Home, which was all about multiversal cross over and whatnot and to have the audiences believing that this is what it's going to be continuing and this is what it's going to be tying into some more and the thing that generated the most hype for this movie at the end of the day is people going like which universe does this take place in a lot of speculation a lot of questions to which we're just not going to get any answers about it whatsoever so for people who are annoyed by it i understand because a part of me went that was dumb yes. <laughs> if this is true that's dumb. And dumb. Manipulative, yeah. <laughs> it's very, it is manipulative because it's not the same thing as just CGI replacement stuff in like a Marvel trailer or removing something. This is a, a specific element that generated questions that we wanted answers to and we wanted to see how it tied in. Now, in my honest opinion, if this is indeed true, it's better that this came out now <laughs> versus people going to, the, like some people are not going to learn this information, but it's better that it, it came out now so that way people aren't as disappointed and can just take in the movie Morbius. So there's not a for riot it at the theater. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. Because the people are going to be upset by it. I do think that these Marvel movies should be more focused on just what it's standalone pieces, especially upon an introductory character. Like part of the joke around this movie is people mainly seem excited to see it just to see what the Spider-Man tie-ins are. I know that's not everybody, including myself. Like I wanted, I just wanted to see a cool vampire B movie. Like that's what I wanted to see. But yeah, as it stands, I think this is a bit of a manipulative tactic. It seems like Sony's Spider-Man universe has been trying to follow in the Marvel Cinematic Universe footsteps and is just not fully meeting that anywhere near. And then I've been, they've even tried it now with their marketing. And I'm like, oh no, that's not how you do it. Well, yeah. And what conf 
confuses me is that the reports around Spider-Man No Way Home was that Sony was largely in charge of that marketing and they demonstrated a reasonably conscientious approach to what to tease from the multiverse, what to keep a secret, and this makes me wonder about the notion of false advertising moving forward. It seems like they're creating a completely other layer of plot and world mm -hmm. building that's just not going to appear and I feel like that is a little bit different because when you're misleading us with either, you know, taking out characters we know will be there mm -hmm. or, you know, adding characters who will still appear, you know, doing something that's not going to actually be a part of your movie and it might be a part of one of your plans moving forward is actually deceptive and might lead people to going, I came in expecting something to do with Spider-Man and it's not even here what gives Sony. Yeah, it's not even clear apparently who, which, like, Adrian Toomes this is. It's, like, the rumor is, is that this movie is its own universe. That it's not even tied in with, like, Andrew Garfield's or Tobey Maguire's or Tom Holland's. That it's its own universe. I feel like part of what adds to that rumor, too, is, like, recently director Daniel Espinosa, I pull up a quote here, says, so in almost all verses you have Spider-Man or a Fantastic Four or a Tony Stark or Morbius, but they will be different in tone. That's not quite the way that the MCU is approaching the idea, but the remaining to some core truth. Then you have the second kind of legend, which is about the totem, which is that in all universe, there's a Spider-Man totem, which means that in all universes, there has to be a Spider-Man or a spider woman. So what he's saying here is that whatever universe Morbius inhabits has his own Spider-Man, apparently. And he's technically in the movie because of that. And yeah, <laughs> technically. So I imagine that down the they Sony would obviously have plans like the rumor of building up to a Sinister Six and you would probably have Morbius and Kraven the Hunter and what I guess is Vulture would also be in there as well, maybe alongside Venom. So they want them to eventually cross paths with Spider-Man or a Spider-Man at some point. It's just the the plan moving here is just <laughs> doesn't seem to quite be working. Like even for the fact that Venom Let There Be Carnage came out and one of the biggest things that was most hyped about was the post credit scene for Venom finally going to be able to cross paths with Tom Holland. And then as you guys saw in Spider-Man No Way Home, it amounted to nothing <laughs> other than like, let's leave a bit of the goo over there and that's it. <laughs> like that's that's all it amounted to. They don't actually cross paths. So it's, it's, it's a letdown. In terms of what they're doing to build hype for Spider-Man crossover with these characters, I'm like, come on. These are characters who derive from the Spider-Man world. They start off as antagonists for Spider-Man. We have to have some clear path that the audience can get clued in on. So maybe with the Madam Web movie is kind of what I'm imagining is that they're building up their own like multiverse of madness in a way maybe stemming from the Madam Web movie itself, which would be cool. But then you hear stuff like what Matt Smith is saying too about like he came out recently. He was even saying, I'm a little bit confused myself as to even who my character really is. <laughs> <laughs> like he's talking about the history of the character. I'll flash the quote on screen. He said like the script was his Bible and then there's this whole history with the comic book but the, the movie didn't seem to be doing that and part of him is just still a little bit lost as to if he even is Lux's crown. I'm like, oh, okay. <laughs> so even your main villain? <laughs> yeah. So this whole process just seems to be uh, really becoming messy. Like I'm looking forward to Craven the Hunter because I really like and admire Aaron Taylor Johnson quite a bit. I imagine that it's, it's probably better that the word gets out on this now versus when they go to actually see the movie and people feel like they've been falsely misled or just purely baited. Yeah. And and, and like people sue over the stupidest shit no, all the time. Say. And I'm like, this could lead to, I'm like, this is one where I'm like, no, nah, you people were straight up lied to. And if you yeah. bought tickets expecting this, you're, you're straight up lied to in those trailers. But all right, guys, uh, what do you think about this news? Are you disappointed in it? Leave your thoughts down below. You can subscribe, click that bell, hit that like button, and we'll. <laughs> Chase Gardner, spring has sprung, and uh, hey, your last name reminds me of growth and foliage and new beginnings and immortality, much like a living vampire. You thrive off the world around you, taking in all the colors and molding them into your own life force. Chase, follow me on this rabbit hole of whimsy. But hey, I hope you're doing well, buddy. I hope that you're looking forward to Morbius and not feeling too baited and switched about the fact that we probably won't get a Spider-Man in this movie. But no matter what Peter Parker's doing, I know that Chase is always here and not too far out of mind. And I hope that you're having a nice uh, start to the springtime. I hope you're feeling that spirit of new growth. Love you, buddy, and we'll catch you next month. Be well.